Question. What do you think you need in order to earn an engineering degree? Some people think you need an IQ of like 120. Other people think you need to be in love with math and solving calculus problems by the time you're like 12. At the very least, you need good test scores, right? You need a good ACT, good SAT score. Well, I don't have any of those things. And I got two engineering degrees. And I graduated with a 3.8 GPA. In fact, I only scored a 17 on the ACT. Do you know how low a 17 is? We're talking 35th percentile. Hey Jake, how'd you do on the ACT? I only got like a 30, but you probably did way better than that, right? On top of that, I failed the college placement exam and never even made it past algebra in high school. I imagine some of you might be able to relate. The point I want to make here is that none of that stuff actually matters. You can get any degree you want no matter your background. My success was possible because I addressed the things that really make a difference. The things that this video and this entire channel are going to be about. I challenge you, after you watch this, I challenge you to ask any student or graduate you know, this is the stuff that will make or break you. So with that, let's jump into it. But first, I need a couple things. Okay, so in order to best explain how this works, I need to introduce you to a little something I like to call the Great Bridge of Graduation! The main deck of the bridge represents your graduation. It is supported by these two main pillars, which are then supported by this archway. Okay, look, I know this bridge structure may seem kind of weird, but it's the best way I could come up with to properly explain how this works. It'll make more sense as we go, so bear with me. Each piece in the structure represents one of the seven fundamentals required for you to graduate. So a couple things I want to make clear. One through five support six and seven, as you'll see. Six and seven are the main supporters for you getting your degree. Now, each piece is equally important. If anyone breaks or isn't present, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. Okay, I think that's enough setup. Let's get in to number one. Without a doubt, the very first piece in our foundation is motivation. I know that may sound a little antiquated, but that's because it's a truth that will never change. The very first and most important thing you need before you start anything challenging is a strong motivation to achieve it. You really need to want it. Like, really, really want it. Not like this kind of want, more like this kind of want. Your motivation needs to be stronger and much more robust than the stress and challenges that are gonna come with your degree choice. Imagine your motivation as this seawall and school as the ocean. Whatever your motivation is needs to be stronger than the constant waves of homework, studying, sleep deprivation, and stress that school is gonna throw at you. If your motivation isn't strong enough, then it's only a matter of time before it erodes away like a poorly built seawall uh, to the consistent demands of your degree. And without motivation, you're probably not going to get very far. But if it is strong enough, then the thought of not getting the degree you want will be way worse than any sacrifice required to get that degree. And that's exactly what you want. So you should think about what's motivating you down this path because it will be where you draw your energy to implement the rest of the things on this list. I think it might be more important than you may realize. 
Okay, let's move on to number two. Currently, the dropout rate for engineering school is 40%. That means that almost half of all students who begin engineering school do not graduate with an engineering degree. And I'm willing to bet that a large majority of that is due to a serious lack in self-discipline. This one's so huge. Again, it may sound old fashioned and it may not be what you wanted to hear, but you're gonna have to get over it because self-discipline is a major key uh, to getting what you want. It's pretty simple. Those who have it will typically graduate with the degree they want. Those who don't have it typically won't. Aww. Why? Because with self-discipline, you will be willing to put in the time, effort, and energy required by your degree. And if you're anything like me, an engineering degree is gonna require a lot of all three of those things. Let me put it this way. Your brain is going to need to get much stronger and its ability to focus for very long amounts of time is going to really need to increase. And the only way that's happening is with some self-discipline. While you're in school, there will be no shortage of distractions and temptations ready and waiting to pull you away from your studies. There's almost always something that you'd rather be doing than studying. But self-discipline will be the thing that keeps you on track day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. So if motivation is your energy or your fuel, then self-discipline will be the engine that moves you forward every day. Okay, let's get on to number three. So how much time do you think you'll need to dedicate in order to graduate? Between homework, labs, lectures, reports, studying, exams, commuting. How much time do you think that'll all take on a weekly basis? It's difficult to assign a value to this question because it varies so much from student to student. But assuming that you're full-time, meaning you're taking 12 credit hours, then I think it's pretty safe to assume that you're gonna be spending at least 40 to 50 hours per week on your schooling. That's a full-time job. A point that I want to make perfectly clear on this is that most students underestimate how difficult their classes will be, which means they also underestimate how much time will be required to pass them. Trust me, I was one of them. Many students think they can just fit school in around their already existing schedules. This is not a good idea. Your studies will require large amounts of quality time, not just 30 minutes here and there. So your other obligations will most likely need to take a back seat to your studies, or at the very least, they need to become flexible around them. I hope you're enjoying the video so far. You know, before we move on to number four, I'll ask you to like, subscribe, you know, do that YouTube stuff in order to support future content like this. Um, also, leave a comment, you know, with your thoughts, maybe suggestions for future videos. I'd really appreciate it. And, you know, if you're looking for a deeper dive into this kind of stuff, uh, please check out my book on Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. You know, it really has everything you need to get that degree you want. You know, I wrote it because I remember how inadequate and just out of place I felt as a new engineering student. And, I, you know, I, I'm sick of watching so many other students get blindsided by the same stuff I did. So I really wanted to help others avoid learning a lot of that stuff the hard way. Okay, enough of that. Let's get on to number four. Let me ask you something. Why is it that when most people try to get into shape, they usually fail? Aww. You know, maybe they'll last a couple weeks, eating better, going to the gym every day, but then before long, they revert back to the same lifestyle they had before. Why? One word, sustainability. It's the same story with a lot of engineering students. You know, they bite off way more than they can chew, thinking they can handle it, or hoping they can graduate earlier, um, and they end up burning out before they even get to sophomore year. You gotta think about sustainability here. You know, you have to establish a schedule and a lifestyle that you can maintain successfully for four, five, six years, however long your degree takes, right? Just like getting into shape 
is not an overnight thing. It can take years to really accomplish. Um, same with your degree. It's going to take years. So the only way you're going to do that is to, is to establish a pathway that you can sustain for however long your degree is going to take. Some key things to consider here are how many credit hours you're taking. And with your other obligations like family and work, is that course load sustainable? What are your stress levels like? And can you keep them under control? Are you paying adequate attention to your diet and physical health? And with your current schedule, is your performance improving or getting worse? The key takeaway here is that you have to realize that you're not a robot, right? Engineering school is much more of a marathon. It's not a sprint. Okay, as long as you establish a steady, sustainable schedule for you, don't think about what other people are doing for you, then you're going to be fine. Number five. On any given day, you'll have a certain number of things that have to get done. Homework, studying for an exam, lab projects, all needing your attention. But there's only so much time. This is why your efficiency is so important. So you're going to want to maximize your gain against what you're putting in. So what I mean by that is your efficiency will be the ratio between how high your grades are against the time and effort that you're putting into your studies. So in order to increase your efficiency, you maximize your grades while minimizing your time and effort going in. So then the question is, how can you increase your efficiency? One great way is to order your list of priorities based on the impact that they'll have to your grades. Then systematically move down that list. So by focusing on the things that are going to be helping your grades and avoiding the things that are going to bring little to no progress like TV, video games, social media, you're going to be increasing your efficiency, right? And the higher your efficiency is, the better chances you'll have of getting that degree you want. Okay. So we've made it through the first five fundamentals. The foundation of our bridge to graduation is complete. So if you remember, we got motivation, self-discipline, time creation and management, sustainable schedule and lifestyle, and efficiency in everything. So those five items are the necessary support that you're gonna need for the next two and most crucial items for your graduation. So with that, let's move on to number six. There is no getting around it. You must become a highly effective and habitual studier if you expect to graduate with an engineering or STEM degree. But what does it mean to be an effective studier? It really just comes down to three simple things. Understanding, application, and retention. Do you understand or comprehend the material that you're studying? Can you now apply it to problems and real world situations? And finally, did you retain it to apply at a later date? You must have all three things in order for a study session to be truly effective. Many students think they can just memorize how a few problems are solved without ever really comprehending the underlying material. That behavior is not gonna get you very far. Trust me, I know. The very first thing you need to do is get rid of all your excuses. I'm not smart enough. It's too hard. My teacher sucks. I don't have enough time. All that stuff needs to go out the window. The reality is, if you have a functioning brain, you are capable of learning anything you want. In other words, you must hold yourself personally accountable for your own learning. That means long hours, late nights. It means saying no to things that you'd rather be doing sometimes. It means that when you're having trouble understanding something, which you will, you don't just give up. You go to your professor's office hours. You go to your TA. You go to your study group. You get a tutor. You can go online to all sorts of resources online until you figure it out. And remember, everybody learns a little differently, so you just got to figure out what works for you and then build on that. But when it comes down to it, studying is the bread and butter of your degree, right? Think about basketball. You're not going to win any games unless you're good at making baskets. That is studying for your degree, okay? That's how important it is. If you're not a good studier, you're not graduating. Okay, last but definitely not least, number seven.
When it comes to getting good grades, your exam scores will have the largest impact. By far. You probably already knew that, but I'm going to help you visualize it so you see how important your exams are. Okay, so let's look at a normal class point distribution. You got 0 to 100 points, or 0 to 100 percent. You know, 90 corresponds to an A, 80 to a B, 70 to a C, 60 to a D, and then under that you get an F, right? Let's say 20 percent is homework, another 10 percent is projects, and then another 20 percent goes to labs. That leaves 50 percent of your final grade is exams. Let's say 15% is exam one, midterm one, and another 15% is you know midterm two, and then final exam is worth 20% of your grade. So this is pretty typical engineering course point distribution. You know, sometimes your exams will be worth 40%, sometimes they'll be worth 70 or 80% of your final grade. Um, but what I want you to see here is how just one exam, one midterm, can take your grade down sometimes more than one full letter grade, right? You could go from a C to a failure, or you'll go from A to a C. Just one bad performance can, how impactful one exam is to your grade. Look, I'm not trying to scare you, but you must understand how crucial your exam performance is. One big thing I like to stress here is how important it is to do well on your first exam in any course. You know, momentum is a very real thing. And if you can prove to yourself that you can succeed on that first exam, the rest of the semester will be so much easier. But if you bomb that first exam, you're gonna feel so deflated because you have the whole rest of the semester that you have to spend trying to make up for that first one. It really just comes down to a major priority shift. Your exams are just way too important to roll the dice on. So. Once you get your syllabus, you mark down every single day that you have an exam that semester and you block out several days before to study, to get to prepare. Um, you know, you will never regret over preparing for an A, but you will always regret under preparing for a C, D, or an F. There you have it. Once I had that foundation of those seven items, my grades went from C's and D's to A's and B's. And look, I know a lot of that stuff might not seem super revolutionary or new, but I hope that I was able to kind of change your perception a little bit on some of this stuff. Because even though it might not be super new, a perception change or perspective change uh, can be all you need sometimes. I hope you found that valuable. If you did, don't forget to check out my book. I'll put that link in the description. Also, please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And let me know how you guys are doing in the comments below. Let me know how your guys' journey through school is going. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, but until next time, thanks for watching and keep up the good work.